Welcome! I am so glad to be here. What school am I at? Hall. Thank you, because sometimes I forget. Dude. I don't know where I am at. That's why I have Google Maps. So it tells me where I'm at. How many of you know your phone number? Holy cow. I have to look at my phone to know my phone number. You guys are so smart. That's good. Always know dad's phone number because mom never knows where her phone is. So it's always good to know dad's, right? Okay, who wants to learn something today? I want to learn something. So my name, I'm just going to start. So my name is Thal Dixon and I am an author. I also wear different hats. This is one of my hats, but I have different hats that I wear. We're going to talk about different things. We're going to talk about how we make books. So we're going to talk about how we make children's books. And uh, we'll talk about that later. So well, I'm going to talk about the different hats that we wear when we make books. And when we're going to talk about, we're going to also go through a few stories. Does that sound like a lot of fun? Yeah. Okay. So everybody, if I do this, if I do this, everybody grab your ears. And close your mouth. Grab your ears. Close your mouth. So if I do that, you get quiet and you grab your ears. So, because sometimes we get excited and that's how I'm going to get you quiet, okay? So everybody can hear and everybody can learn, all right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about when we make children's books, when I make them, I've been doing this for a long time now. Most of my kids are grown. My youngest, my baby, which is Tyler. You can see that's Tyler and Tyler's Animals. He's my youngest. He's in high school now. So that gives you an idea. When I started this process, he was like one. So yeah, I've been doing this a little while since before you guys were born, but it's a lot of fun. I get ideas. I get these crazy ideas and then I want to write stories and I want to do it for my kids. So I'm going to tell you some stories and we're going to talk a little bit about how we make books. First off, first thing I want to talk about is who is the person that writes the story? What's that person's call? I just told you before. Yes. Who is it? Who writes the story? Author. Everybody. Author. Author. Good. Good. Who draws the pictures? The illustrator. The illustrator. So who else do we need to make a book besides the author and the illustrator? Is there anybody else? Cook. Who? Who? A photographer? Man, <laughs> So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about three other positions or three other hats. And sometimes they're the same person or maybe one person wears two hats. I wear multiple hats in the process, but we have an author, we have an illustrator, we have an editor. Everybody say editor. editor. We have a printer and we have a publisher. Okay, so let's talk about them a little bit. And then we'll do a, a quick, well, do we want to talk about them first or do we want to do a story? Story! How did I know that was going to be the choice? Okay, so let's do a story first. Let's go over here. Nope, we're going to have to do new stories that you've never seen before. That's the rule today. Okay, so. So that's a lot of teas, right? Okay, so those are called tongue twister books, and I talk about them sometimes. Most of the time, I like to write in rhyme, and I like to write my stories in rhyme and tell the story. But, like Dr. Seuss, exactly. And I like to have a message, but these tongue twister books, the reason I write them is because I have my son, my youngest, Tyler, he used to like the bee book. Big brown bear, blue bull, beautiful baboon, blowing bubbles, biking backwards, bump black bugs, banana boxes. It it's, came with the Dr. Seuss collection. And when I used to read those to him all the time, one day I said, I can write a book like that. So I went in the other room and I wrote a, the P book. The next day I wrote the S book. And when I was getting those ready to go to print, I came up with the T book. And so when I was young, I knocked my two front teeth out riding my big wheel down the street, I hit a car. And so for a while I couldn't make all my sounds. And when my teeth came in, I had to go to a speech therapist. And that speech therapist always made me do a lot of different tongue twisters and rhymes to practice. So I would learn things like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? And I'd have to say those things fast to practice, right? So that I could do my sounds correctly. So it's something that I think kids like because there's a, there's a pattern, right? 
and we like patterns and so I think those are fun books but they're a little bit different than the ones that I usually write. So I've got something, what I want to talk about right now is when we make the books, there's a process on making the books and I created a new video that will show you some of the things that happen when we make the book. So what I want to do is show you that video right now and I'm going to put that on. So, so you guys got to, that's why you got to listen, okay? I already went the camera. Yep, okay. All right, pay attention. So, one of the things we talked about is if you notice in that process, when we got the story in the computer, one of the things he talked about, he used the word editing. What were some of the things that they checked in editing? Do you remember? Yes. You forgot? Yes. Yes. So... So in the editing, we talked about sometimes there's spelling mistakes, there's grammar mistakes, there's different things that we have to check. And that process doesn't just start with the story and going in when we're creating the inside the computer. It happens all the way through. We said that then they send the files and they'll even send advanced books. So I need your help. One of the things they'll do is I, I decide what kind of paper I want to use. So sometimes I get one of these. See this book? I want you to, this weight, listen, this is a new story that I have, okay? Polar bears in a snowstorm. Look close. You gotta really look close. It's really snowing. See it? Okay, really, this is a white book. And what this is, is a lot of times when I decide, when we decide as a publisher, I'm gonna switch hats and go to the publisher, I get to decide what size book. Think about children's books. They come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes it's annoying because they have circle books and they have all these things. I like mine uniform so they all fit. So if I put mine in a stack, they all stack up nice and neat together. That's just me. So I make them the same size. But they always send me a sample to tell me this is what the book's going to feel like. It's a hardback book. The paper's a certain quality and I can check it before they ever put the ink on. Another thing they'll do is they'll send me it advanced, before they put that on, they'll send them separate. Hey, I have that. And if you see, they have a little color chart to make sure that the color, because sometimes the colors on our computer don't match the color that we put on paper. What if I used, instead of using a white paper, what if I used a cream color paper? All the colors would be a little different when the ink went on the paper. So these are things that we check. And there's also a space in the middle with little marks and it's got these little dashes on the inside and that lets me know that's called a printer mark. Everybody say printer mark. printer mark. And why do you think that would be important to have those printer marks in the middle? Yes. Um, because that they know that it's a printer. Well, because that's going to get cut off when they, when they make the book. Like for example, when we print, if you open up in a book, see that area in the middle? You don't see a white space in between, do you? Because once they bind the book, that gets lost in what we call the gutter. So if, I, if that's not lined up properly, what's going to do is it's going to yeah. suck some of the picture in there and then all your picture is going to look off and weird. So it's got to be lined up perfect. So that's one of the things that we check for in that. And this book right here, I love to tell the story. So my youngest editor that helps me is Tyler. Okay, he's now in the ninth grade. But Tyler has been an editor of mine since he was eight years old. When I put this book out, Tyler became an editor. You know how that happened? Tyler came to me just before we were ready to print the book. He says, Dad, we got the advanced copy and stuff. He goes, Dad, we got a problem. I said, okay, what's the problem, son? He goes, Priscilla is spelled differently in the book. I said, what? So I we went and looked. Now, I only use her whole name two times in the book. I use Priscilla Joanna Angelica Gore, that's her whole name. I use it at the beginning of the book and I use it at the end. And what I did is I spelled Joanna two different ways, once with an H and once without. And I had taken it through all these grown-ups and none of them caught it. I didn't catch it, none of the other grown-ups caught it, but my eight-year-old caught it, so he got paid 30 bucks and became an editor on the team. And now Tyler checks all my books and he looks at it and he goes through. And you never know when those mistakes come. Sometimes they can come here, in fact, Recently, I was working on a book, and another tricky place they show up sometimes 
is they can show up in a graphic. See how this is a graphic? Like I might send the book off to my editor and we'll do all the words and the text, but let's say my illustrator is doing a graphic and there's some words in the graphic. When I got the original book back on this, the E was missing out of management and we all caught it after we saw it. But sometimes those things can get through. So you gotta look very carefully. And then even after we get the book sent to us, every once in a while, there'll be a book and you guys are gonna help me. Can you all be my editors for a minute? Okay, so I want you to see this book and you guys tell me if you see anything wrong with this book. If you see something wrong with it, raise your hand. Okay, if you see something wrong with this book, I want you to raise your hand. Okay, what's the problem? Everybody tell me. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, see, that's an easy fix, right? No problem, right? We, what? Well, that's, there we go, see, look. What? Done. So, so you can see that even when I get them printed, obviously when they were printing thousands of books, this one book, when it went through the machine, the pages got put in upside down. So we always gotta check them. And sometimes something gets through that's a mistake. And so maybe I get one and the whole thing's been bent or something, things happen. Yeah, that's so that I don't mix it up with the good ones and give it to some kid. I, that's just to keep me straight. But thanks, that's good to notice. Okay, who's ready for another story? Okay, listen up. This next story, this next story is a story that I wrote because I have five kids and there's this thing that happens with my kids. Usually happens first or second grade, and then it builds all the way until like 13, 14, 15, 16, until you kick them out of the house. And what happens is you'd ask them to do something and they go, I know, I know, but then they don't do it. Do you guys ever do that to your parents? Yeah. You're, they're like, brush your teeth. I know, I know, right? Who does that? See? so. I've got a story here for you called Norman Knows, and we're going to use that story. So everybody grab your ears. Norman Knows. Okay, so we were talking about, we were talking about editing, right? And we were talking about different hats, and the printer, the printer's a very simple, simple one, and that is they print the books, right? So most of us kind of understand what the printer does. They print the actual book. The editor is making those corrections all the way through. But there's one person we haven't talked about yet, and that is the publisher. Everybody say publisher. Publisher. What does a publisher do? Does anybody know what a publisher does? No. Yes. It sells them away to person. It's very good. So the publisher is like the business person, right? They're the ones that have to come up with the money. They have to market the book. They have to sell the book. They have to get the books yeah, to the printer, get them printed. Like for me, I am not only the author, but I'm also the publisher. So what I do is I don't draw my own pictures. So I hire illustrators. If you notice, I have different illustrators that I use. And some of them, they're from different areas of the world. One of my illustrators that I use is the same age as one of my sons. And he's in the Philippines actually. He's like 27 and I keep him so busy that he can never leave me because I always start him. He's working on two books right now. And so as soon as he finishes one, I give him something else to work on because he's so good and, and we connect. And what's mostly important I found is that when I communicate to him my ideas that he can put those into pictures. So sometimes it could be a really good illustrator, but you just don't connect. So having that connection is really important. And so as a publisher, one of the things I need to do is I arrange for how we get the books from China where we print them, because we print them in China and we want to get them all the way over here. So I got a quick video. It's only three minutes. Who can last through a three minute video? Perfect. And it's going to tell you how we get the books from my head to China to get printed and all the way here to your classroom. Sometimes I tell that story, I just tell it. I figured with the video, you guys could see what a palette is. You could see those things. So that was that helpful to be able to see what it looks like. And now you guys have all seen the inside of my warehouse and all those pictures, that's all on my wall. 
I had a guy paint all that on my wall. So when, I, when I'm in there working, I get to see that all the time. It's, it, it's kind of fun for me because I'm silly like that. So anyway, who's ready for another story? So do we want to do, I'm going to give you a choice. Do we want to do a tongue twister book or do we want to do a rhyming book? A rhyming book. Perfect. I have got a new story right here. Okay, Kate, you want to come up here for a minute? This is Kate, and Kate is from Far West Roofing, and Far West Roofing has worked with me for years now, and what they do is they are my sponsor. Anybody knows what a sponsor is? No. Basically, they pay money so that we can do something really fun in the next few minutes, and that is because of Far West Roofing, all of you get to go home with a book today. And her dad, who since he has a lot of kids, he gets really tired of kids saying, I know, I know, I know, right? Yeah. So she knows that. And so we're going to send a copy of Norman Knows to all of you so you can learn that lesson and make your parents very happy. So what we're going to do right now is our teachers are going to come up and help. And everybody sit down. We're going to pass out books to everybody. You can look at your book. Don't swing it around and hit your neighbor or anything. And then afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to get a picture with everybody together. Does that sound fun? Yeah! Okay, so just sit down, and then as we get a little further, I'll ask some of you to raise your hands if you don't have a book yet. Teachers, you want to come out? 